Um, so like Matt said, I'm the, the head of the data science and engineering team at Bonobos. Um, and so I started there about a year and a half ago. And so I want to talk to you guys a little bit about uh, my experience there in building out the data science and engineering platform and the, and the team. Um, so when I started there, it was a really unique opportunity for me uh, because it was, uh, it was, there was really no data technology legacy platform to speak of. So it was really a green field, a chance to kind of start over from the beginning and question some of the assumptions and the approaches that I'd used in the past at places like Groupon and Netflix. And you know, the approaches that we take in there was very much kind of uh, what John mentioned before the, in the last talk about the field of dreams approach, where you kind of build these, take these big technology solutions, you uh, plan it all out ahead of time, build it all there, and then you know, down the road eventually bring those users online. And, um, I'd always kind of walked away from those experiences with kind of the same feeling that a lot of the other speakers here over the last couple of days have mentioned, that that approach just doesn't work. And it doesn't work for a few reasons. Um, mind you, one of them is expensive. So it costs a lot of money to get all the, the hardware and software licenses. And the most expensive part is the people. Uh, you have to hire you know, a huge team of people in order to maintain and administer all this, this hardware and technology that you put in place. Uh, the second part is the time to market. It just takes too long to get it off the ground and get it into the hands of the business where it's really making an impact. And that's what you know, this is all about, is, is trying to make, maximize the impact of this technology. Um, the third part is that the third problem is that it's, it's really rigid. So these technologies are built to do a very specific thing, um, and they're not they're not built to, to integrate with other technologies very easily. Um, so a lot of times you end up painting yourself in a corner. So you you solve the problem the way it was when you started, but then new problems come up, and you're struggling to try and figure out how to fit that into the you know the square peg in the round hole of what you've already built. Um, and then the last part, which is one that kind of which particularly bothered me and pops up a lot of times is that over time with this big technology stack, you, uh, you start to get a divergence of your goals. So there's the, the one goal that you started with of really trying to have them maximize the impact on the business and really uh, be relevant to the business and solve those problems. But eventually, once you have this big technology stack, potentially millions of dollars worth of technology and software, you have to actually manage that. And, and part of that is that kind of IT mentality of keeping costs down. Um, and it, and as a result, you tend to try, you instead of moving slower. Um, and then all of a sudden that comes in conflict with the goal of trying to, to, you know, to adapt and change with the business. So I got to kind of take a fresh look at this and say, okay, assuming there was nothing in place, no, nothing to start with, how would I approach these problems today with, with, the, with the technology that's on the market today? And uh, I really saw it as a whole set of problems that you need to solve. So there's the data storage and the, and the processing power. You need to make sure you have enough storage and the ability to actually you know, query and process this data. You have to have the data integration be able to pull the data from all the different sources that you have. And for, for us as a, as a fairly new company, most of those sources are already out in the cloud. We're using you know, shared services for uh, our email provider, for email sender. We uh, are using Amazon for our website. Um, you know, basically, every, uh, our customer support tickets are, uh, are in a shared service as well. So all the data is kind of spread around everywhere. Um, then there's the data accessibility. You have to actually, once you get this data and are able to process it, you actually have to find a way to get this into the hands um, and democratize it across the whole organization. Uh, people that may not be uh, may not be that technically savvy may only know how to use a web browser or Excel. Uh, then you've got the more complex problems, which is the ones that you really really want to get to as a as a data professional, which are uh, the data visualization, your statistical problems, looking at uh, A/B test experiments or predictive modeling or uh, machine learning. So when I looked at all those different problems, what I realized is today there's a lot of good shared services out there that can, that can handle these problems pretty well. Um, and so my thought was, you know, that maybe that this could, this could uh, give me an advantage over some of those problems that I talked about earlier. Um, and so that's the approach I took. I, I looked at I, using uh, Amazon Redshift as the data storage part, you know, uh, and the, the processing database using a company called SnapLogic for the data integration, which is a hosted ETL uh, solution, and, and using good data then to handle the good data for the data accessibility. So that's a, a tool where you push the data into a hosted solution, and then they, uh, they provide the, the software through a web browser that does the day-to-day -day ad hoc reporting, as well as the CAN dashboards and things like that. Um, and then for the more advanced statistics stuff, we're using, using Amazon uh, computing resources alone, which is Python. Um, so these are all, uh, you know, they, uh, shared services or, or open source solutions that we can we can get um, pretty easily. 
And that solves the problems I talked about earlier in terms of number one is it's cheaper. Um, so shared services because you're not you don't have to buy this whole thing up front. It certainly um, kind of doesn't you don't front load all the costs. So it's cheaper to get it off the ground. And then going back to the, the human resource part, you don't have to have as many people on your team. I don't need to hire people that are doing the administration and maintenance of these solutions of the hardware and software. Um, number two, the time of market is much quicker because uh, I don't have to wait for this soft the hardware to be delivered. I don't have to worry about installing software and configuring it. Uh, we can move straight into the implementing it. Um, so from the time that we kind of made all the agreements with these vendors, that we had our first dashboard out the door within a month that had all the kind of core sales metrics, uh, gross sales margin, average order value, those kind of metrics. Um, so we're very able to get off the ground into the hands of business very quickly. Um, and then from the from the standpoint of openness, uh, shared services are just more open. They need to be by because of the market demands. Um, you have to be able to integrate with other solutions, and the more you can integrate, the, the better service you are. And so a lot of these, you know, the, the trend in the market is definitely moving towards people using REST APIs, um, which is I'm actually trying to implement a rule where that's the only vendors we'll work with are those that have some sort of API that we can integrate with so that you know, we can get the maximum value out of it to minimize the integration cost. Um, and then the last part, which I think is probably the most important piece, is it really helps reduce that friction. So I've taken a lot of that, we're basically trading in a lot of that IT focus that we would otherwise have to build internally, and we're trading it in for a subscription fee that we pay to somebody else. Uh, first of all, you know, we're getting a, it's, it's a lot cheaper, but second of all, that allows me as a, as a manager who's building a data science team to focus my hiring efforts on people that can really have an impact on the business. So people that have expertise in statistics or expertise in Python or expertise in e-commerce operations, things that can really, where they can work directly with, with people on the, on the business side and really figure out how to use data to have a maximum impact on the business. Um, so that's the approach we took and within about 18 months, um, I've been able with a very small team, it was just actually me, me alone for the first six months and now a team of four people. I've been able to get uh, pretty good results in it in a pretty short time. Um, we've a couple of examples of kind of where we've been able to apply this stuff. By getting uh, the good data solution out the door, we've been able to um, give the average business user access to data um, both on an ad hoc and, and dashboard basis uh, very easily. So um, I know a couple of examples of that. Uh, so Cyber Monday is a great example. It's, that's our biggest day of the year by far. And so, uh, we have a lot of uh, plans and forecasts on what we on the, the goals that we want to hit for that day, um, and we've got everybody in the company kind of huddled around the real-time dashboard, watching how that's progressing throughout the day. Uh, and so this last Cyber Monday, we were we were showing uh, things were going along pretty well, but we were showing we were, we were falling short a little bit on the average order value. Um, so marketing had designed a promotion, uh, one of these tiered promotions where if you spend uh, you know if you have a certain amount in your cart, then you get a twenty or thirty percent discount. Um, and so midday or so, we looked at the distribution of average order values and, and decided and kind of on the fly tweak where we were going to set that threshold. Uh, and then market immediately sent out that the, uh, the modified promotion, and then we saw that we were able to kind of meet that goal towards the last half of the day, which is, which is you know, a great example of being reactive and being able to make quick decisions, which never would have been possible before. Um, another great example is with the merchandising team where Sometimes we have issues with our products where we uh, they might not they might not fit the way that we intended them to or the way that, uh, what the customer expected. Uh, the way that's worked in the past is you get these anecdotal reports to your customer service team. Um, after a while, they start saying, "Hey, something seems kind of funny. We seem to be getting a lot of reports about this type of product." The merchandising team then goes ask for a sample from the warehouse and tries to you know verify those reports. And then if we're lucky, within a couple of months of product launching, we realized that, hey, we've got a problem, we need, to, we need to make a change. But what we found is by looking at the return rates on new products um, and comparing those to the return rates of similar products in the same category or subcategory, we can actually detect those, those problems as early as one or two weeks instead of two months. Um, and so that's, you know, getting that in the hands of the merchandising team allows them to, again, make quicker decisions and minimize the, the negative impact on the customers, which is great. And then, in addition to that, we've been able to reduce a lot, you know, hundreds or thousands of annual hours of just compiling data from multiple sources by getting this in one place. And at the same time, I've been able to, with a pretty small team, get them focused more on the, the high-end uh, problem. So doing experimentation analysis on A-B tests or um, doing, you know, regression analysis on the demographic factors to make for a, a good market for us that we should focus our efforts on from marketing or from our, from our guide shop. 
shops or physical stores. Um, so uh, overall, it's, uh, it's, been, it's been pretty successful, and I think you know, the shared, shared services allows us to get that success at a cost-effective price and do it at a, a really high speed. Um, so I think it's, a, it's an, interesting, an interesting approach that can really help.